When Windows 11 launched in 2021, its high system requirements rendered many PCs ineligible for the upgrade. This, combined with its performance and stability issues, has prompted many people to stick with Windows 10. In fact, the majority of Windows installations today are still Windows 10. And even I have recommended people hold off on the upgrade for as long as possible. But now, there's a problem. If you're still on Windows 10, you now have less than one year before Microsoft ends support for Windows 10 on October 14th, 2025. And in case you took the title of this video literally, it's not gonna die. Like, it won't be like you turn on your computer one day and it doesn't boot anymore. No, it's not gonna be like that. It's just going to stop receiving updates, including bug fixes, and most importantly, security updates, which are pretty important if you want to continue using the internet. Going back to my point about the majority of Windows installations being Windows 10, the number of Windows 10 installations is on a slow decline as more and more people are buying new PCs pre-installed with Windows 11 or upgrading their existing ones to Windows 11. And hopefully we see the number of Windows 10 installations continue to go down as we get closer to October 14th of 2025, the day that Microsoft cuts off Windows 10. And in case security isn't a compelling enough reason for you to upgrade to Windows 11, consider this. Windows 10 version 22H2, which released on October 18th, 2022, was the last feature update to Windows 10. This means that Windows 10 isn't getting any new features or redesigns and hasn't been for the last two years. And if you're worried about future-proofing at all, which you should be at least a little bit, Windows 10 is not a great bet, since software developers and hardware manufacturers do eventually stop supporting older operating systems. So if you're still on Windows 10, what can you do? The first and most obvious option is to upgrade your PC to Windows 11. Now, thankfully, this time around, you won't have to worry about any programs not running, since Windows 11 is pretty much just a glorified redesign of Windows 10. So any programs that run on 10 should run on 11. It's a free upgrade, and you should see an option to upgrade in Windows Update, assuming your PC is supported which pretty much any computer bought since 2018 will be. But what if it's not supported? Well, depending on why, you might be able to upgrade your PC to meet the minimum requirements. For example, if it's just because of the requirement for a TPM 2.0, you might be able to purchase and install a TPM or upgrade an existing one in a desktop. Or else, the most obvious option is to just buy a new PC with Windows 11. If your PC is running sluggishly on Windows 10, a new PC will run faster and more smoothly. If you're on a budget, you can consider used or refurbished PCs, just make sure that it comes with Windows 11, or at least meets the minimum requirements. As for what to do with your old PC, well, you could turn it into a home server project. But what if you don't want to upgrade your PC? Well, there is another unofficial upgrade path available to you. Upgrade your unsupported PC anyway. I'll quickly show you how to do that using a program called Rufus. So the first thing you need to do is download a Windows 11 ISO from this page, which I'll have linked in the description. Once you're on it, 
Scroll down to the third option, Download Windows 11 Disk Image, and then select the only download option, Windows 11 Multi-Edition ISO, then click Download Now, and then select your language, then click Confirm, and then click on the only download, which is 64-bit, and then that'll start downloading right away, and once you've got that downloaded, which will take a while, then you're going to download Rufus, which I'll also have linked in the description. Now, before you open that, first of all, you're going to need to plug in your flash drive, which will be your Windows 11 installation medium. Now, this will have to be at least 8 gigabytes in size. And just quickly make sure that there's nothing on this drive that you need, because it will be erased. And this should be the only USB drive connected to your system during this process, just so that way you don't run the risk of erasing the wrong one. Once you've done that, you're going to open Rufus, and then user account control will prompt you. Click yes, and then you're going to select your flash drive, and then under boot selection, select disk or ISO image, then click the select button then select your Windows 11 ISO, and then under image option, leave this as standard Windows installation. And under partition scheme, for most people, GPT will be fine. If you have an older computer that uses a legacy BIOS, then you'll have to change this to MBR. Pretty much any computer bought since 2014 will have UEFI. So imagine for most people you're going to select GPT slash UEFI. File system, I would leave this as NTFS, and cluster size, just leave this default. And then once you verify your selections, click start. And now it'll give you options to customize your Windows installation medium. The option we're interested in is the one at the top, which will allow us to bypass Windows 11 system requirements, in particular the requirement for 4 gigabytes of RAM, Secure Boot, and TPM 2.0. But while you're at it, you can also remove the requirement for a Microsoft account, create a local account, or any of these other options. And then once you're happy with the options you've selected, click OK, and then It'll start creating your Windows 11 installation USB. Once that's done, you'll have a custom Windows 11 installation USB. And then from that, you can either upgrade or do a clean install of Windows 11 as normal. Now, I will warn that Microsoft states that unsupported PCs will not be entitled to receive updates which includes security updates. I've never heard of this issue being encountered on unsupported PCs in practice, but we don't know when or if Microsoft will start actually enforcing this and how exactly they will go about doing that. But I'm just warning you that it is a possibility, so this approach might only buy you a couple of years. But hold on, Drew. Isn't there going to be an Extended Security Updates, or ESU, program for Windows 10, like there was with Windows 7 a few years back? Well, yes. And this time around, it'll be available to both individuals and organizations, unlike with Windows 7, where ESU was only offered to organizations that purchased volume licenses. In case you're unfamiliar, ESU will provide an additional three years of security updates, or until 2028, for Windows 10, for an annual fee. This is not a long-term solution, but a temporary bridge. Microsoft has yet to release pricing for ESU for consumers. Quick update, Microsoft just released their pricing for ESU for consumers. It'll be $30 for one year, but they're only offering it for one year to consumers. Now, if you have a crummy old computer that struggles to run even Windows 10, and you don't want to make it worse by 
forcing 11 on it, but you can't afford a new PC right now, then I think that would be one case where it might make sense to pay for ESU for one year to buy yourself time to save up for a new PC. Now, if you don't want to upgrade to Windows 11, another option is to switch to Mac. Mac OS is not a bad replacement for Windows. Many popular programs that run on Windows will also run on Mac, including Microsoft Office and the Adobe Creative Cloud. And even though Apple transitioned their Mac lineup to their own silicon, these newer Macs will still run programs designed for Intel Macs, thanks to Apple's Rosetta 2 engine. Furthermore, Mac OS is used by many creative professionals and tech enthusiasts. Now, one area where it lacks is gaming. So if you're a gamer, this may not be a viable option for you. And the truth is, I don't see many Windows 10 users switching to Mac, especially since this option involves buying a whole new, not to mention expensive computer. And by the way, I'm intentionally ignoring Hackintoshing, since that's dying along with Intel Macs, if it's not dead yet. Now another option would be to switch to Chromebook. Chromebooks are a line of low-end, budget laptops that run Google's Chrome OS. Chrome OS is designed to be used in the browser, making it perfect for those simplistic users who just use their computers for web browsing. Though it can run Android and Linux apps. Now, because these are low-end machines, they're not suitable for people who use their computers for more than basic stuff like web browsing, email, and word processing. Now, if you don't want to buy a whole new computer, there is a version of Chrome OS that you can install on your existing PC called Chrome OS Flex. It's free of charge, so you won't need to spend any money if you want to take this approach. What's more, Chrome OS is more lightweight than Windows so you will notice a performance improvement, especially on old or low-end PCs. But again, Chrome OS is designed to be used in the browser, so this is really only a viable option for people who just use their computers for web browsing and email. And that leaves Linux. Now, some people would say that that's madness, but Linux is a more viable option than ever even for gamers. Today, there are more games that run natively on Linux than ever before, and Steam games for Windows can be run on Linux via Proton. As for your basic tasks, like web browsing and email, Linux will do that just fine. All the major modern browsers will run on Linux. For an Office suite, Linux has LibreOffice, which for most people will get the job done. Now, I can already hear people saying, but Linux is hard to use. Distributions designed for home use, like Ubuntu and Linux Mint, are actually pretty user-friendly. And like Chrome OS, Linux is more lightweight than Windows. So again, you will notice a performance improvement, especially on old or low-end PCs. Now, one major caveat with Linux is that not all software is available for it. A prime example is the Adobe Creative Cloud, which is only available on Windows or Mac. So if you use the Adobe Creative Cloud, you're better off sticking with Windows or switching to Mac. Also, there is actually no OS that you can just download and install called Linux. There are many different flavors or distributions of it. If you want to give Linux a try, the two distributions I would recommend for beginners are Ubuntu and Linux Mint. You can install Linux alongside Windows or even run it off a USB drive. I have been using Linux as my daily driver for about five and a half years now. I do all my video production for YouTube, including screencasting and editing from on Linux. On this channel, 
I make videos about Linux, including tutorials on how to install Linux alongside Windows. And of course, there's the last option. Stick with Windows 10. Say goodbye to forced software updates and hardware upgrades, and just don't connect to the internet after October 14th, 2025. Now, for reasons I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I don't recommend doing that. And that's it for this video. Be sure to give it a like if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and see you next time.